Hello, this is a Svelte Kit tutorial that will be showing you how to add Tailwind CSS to a newly created Svelte project. And finally, in the second part of this episode, we will be learning how to upload this app to Firebase Hosting to host it for free on the internet. Starting off, what is Svelte and why should you use it? So here's their promotional website, well, their actual website that says why. For my use cases, Svelte is incredibly useful because it's of its easy syntax and it allows you to focus on the code, not on uh, how to structure it all. So it does an amazing job of compiling it so that it runs fast. And as they say, it is truly reactive. When writing Svelte code, things will update all the time, which is important when you're just trying to make an app. So starting off, we'll initialize our Svelte app using Vite. So we just use this command and then we'll go here. So we can run that right here in the console. It'll run this and then it gives a few instructions. So we want to go into that and then we want to run these two commands, which as you can see are the same as these commands. So we'll just run them. So letting that run quickly, then we'll after that do npm run dev. It'll open up a local port there, localhost 3000. I'm just going to turn on property so I can copy this. So now if we go here and we go to this place, there we go. Hello world. Open on port 3000. It's reactive as you can see and it works well. Incredible. Now we've created our Svelte app. How do we add Tailwind? First of all, you may be asking, what is Tailwind CSS and why would I want to use it? Well, as many people may know, CSS is a little confusing at times. Heck, sometimes I have no clue what I'm doing with it. But Tailwind can fix that. It doesn't teach you how to do CSS, but it teaches you, it, sh it allows you, it, like, it makes it simpler. So by adding tags to classes, you're able to easily make beautiful UI. Like examples like this, beautiful ways of just changing things, adding your own color schemes, everything. So that is Tailwind. But how do we add it? Well, this is a little bit more of a tricky process, but it shouldn't be too hard. So first of all, we'll go back here. I'll stop running it using Control C on Windows or Command C on Mac. Then we'll install Tailwind CSS dependencies. And the reason I have this capital D there is that it installs it as dev dependencies. And the reason that it's like that is so that then when we finally compile and run the app, it doesn't have that still there. Because some of these things we use just for compilation. Finally, when we export the app into the uh, final stages, we don't want that there anymore because it's just extra space, which slows down the client experience and it is just unneeded. So now that we're installing this, um, we'll install one more thing as well. So I forgot to add this. We'll quickly install this. So these are all dependencies of Tailwind CSS. So you don't have to worry about exactly what they're doing. We won't be specifically using them. We'll be using the overarching Tailwind CSS. So now that we have this, now we need to initialize different files into our project. So if we look at our project here, open Svelte, my app, here's our app here. Uh, it works. We've seen it. We've seen the app.svelte. This will be where we can write our code. Library, counter. This is another file. As you can see, we import counter here. Very easy, very simple. It's these abstractions that make Svelte way more easy to use, in my opinion, than other frameworks. So now that we've done that, now we need to use a few more commands just to get Tailwind fully up and running. So then we can do npx. Tailwind CSS in it. And so this will quickly create a few more files. Let's see what this issue is. Um, oh, yes, I spelled it wrong. Completely wrong. There, this should work. There we go. So as you can see, it created these two files, and we can also see those here, these two files. And we'll be changing a lot about these files soon, but that is just a way of not us having to do that. So now that we've done this, we need to make a few edits to these files. First of all, when we're running this, we don't want it to be a CJS file. So we'll remove that, and then we'll redo this part of the code. So for this, we'll do export, export default. There we go. Okay, we're back. Now we have our thing here. There's a few comments here and there just for clarifying. So dark mode. Tailwind does support dark mode, which is nice, but it's a little complicated to start using. But now we'll move on to the next file, which is postcssconfig.js. Yes. We'll change this to a .js as well, and then we'll go along to edit it. So we'll start off by deleting this, and I'll snap back when we're done. Okay, we're back. We finished postcssconfig.js. Now we need to edit a few more files, and we'll get on to that right now. So we need to edit this file. First of all, we need to add our correct imports. This is the only import we need. Now what we need to do is we need to use that. 
Now we have this done. So finally, there's a few more steps which are incredibly simple. In this file, we create a new full thing called tailwind css.svelte. And then I'll snap back once I have the code for it. Here we are with the code ready to go. Now what we do is we call this code here. We have to import it. So we can do import tailwind CSS. There we go. Auto got it. Then we just do tailwind. We can do tailwind CSS. And there we go. Now tailwind CSS will be running as soon as we start using the application. So that is now fully set up. So if we were to run this application, it should run on localhost 3000. And if we go, there we go. This is the updated app because it's now here because the styling has been changed because of Hailwind CSS. So a few things may be a little off, but once you get the hang of Tailwind CSS, everything will look better. So we can actually go to the Tailwind docs. And what we can see is, let's say we want to find something for buttons. So we can go to buttons. And we can see how can we change things about buttons. So once we go to the buttons, we can then find specific things we want to change. We could change color, size, corners, many things. So that is left to you to work with. So now you can just use Tailwind how you normally would. On class, you can just add the class and then whatever the Tailwind thing you want. So you could add colors, whatever. And so now Tailwind is working. You don't need to worry about anything else. And then once you compile your app, it'll work with the Tailwind properly. Don't have to worry about anything. So that is how you add Tailwind easily to Svelte applications.